Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you Photoshop's Blend If sliders. Basically, using the Blend If sliders you can combine photos and images and painting elements together without doing a lot of manual work. It's super intuitive and super great and I use it super all the time, super. This is just going to be an introduction and a buttload of examples, but at the end I'll have a link to more advanced techniques. Let's just get right into it. Here's this brick wall, and let's say we have this texture of this leaky bunker wall. And let's say we want to get these leaky stains onto that brick wall. Easiest thing to do, you might think, is like, oh, well, you know, I'll just set it to multiply, you know, but then it's affecting more than you would probably want it to. And then you have to use the levels to change it up, and you're still going to have problems with stuff. It's, you don't necessarily want multiply, let's put it that way, or any other blending mode. Um, another option you could do is you could select out the white in various ways. You could use the channels, which I'll get into later. And, you know, that's that's not necessarily going to do the job for you. So the Blend If sliders are accessible through the FX menu down here on the layer dock. You can go to Blending Options, and it's right in there. Another really easy way to get to that is just by double-clicking your layer icon. Double-click that, and here we go. The Blend If sliders are right here as soon as you open it. This top slider will blend based on the image on the layer that you're using currently. The slider underneath it will blend based on the pixels underneath your layer, and I'll, I'll show you that in a second. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you that, let's say we want to get rid of these light areas because we just want the dark areas as the stain. So what I'm going to do is grab the slider and just pull it in, and you'll see all those light areas are starting to drop out. But if you notice, if you look closely, you can see how it's kind of pixelated and jagged, which is really digital looking and it's not what we want. First thing we're going to do is come take a look at this slider up here. If you look closely, you can see the line in between. And what you can do is hold Alt on your keyboard and split that in two and drag one side out. You'll see you get a nice fade and gradation. What it's doing is fading that blend between these two. And so you can knock out those lights and get a much more natural blend between the lights and the darks. And so you see this actually looks quite nice and it's fluid now. It's got a nice edge to it. And so you can do that, or you can say knock out the darks and do the same thing with the opposite side. And see now the black behind is showing through and you're just getting those lights. So what we're gonna do is knock out those lights like we did a second ago. Get a nice blend. And we're going to turn off that black layer, and there you go, you have the stain on the bricks. And now it doesn't look entirely natural yet. It uh, probably could use some color adjustments and such, and also it's laying on top of the bricks, and you can't see it conforming to that texture. And so let me zoom in a little bit, and we're going to double click this again, and we're going to go to the under layer, which is the one that blends based on the underlying pixels. And let's say we want to knock out these white areas, so we don't want the grime to be on the grout underneath, just to have it shine through a little bit. And so we're going to grab the light bit, and you'll see how it starts to knock out that grout. But we want to have a nice blend again, so we're going to split it and slowly bring it down just a little bit, finesse these a teeny bit. We'll zoom back out, and uh, we'll toggle it on and off, and you can see how it gives you a much more natural weathered effect. But what we're also going to do is to get it to blend just a little bit nicer than that even, is we're going to knock out some of those darks, and so the top parts of the brick show through a little bit as well. right? So we're just going to slide this through, and you can see the red of the brick is starting to show through a little bit. And so we'll toggle that on and off, and you can see how it looks pretty natural. What I'm also going to do is what you can do after you've done stuff like this is do adjustments and curves layers and stuff to that layer. And so you can adjust it on the fly, and it'll blend automatically for you. And so what I'm going to do is maybe just darken that up a little bit, just to tweak this. Does that look any better? Maybe it's a little bit darker, so it's nicer. What I'm also going to do is play with the uh, color balance and uh, get it to blend in there just a little bit better. See what works nicely. It's a little bit more greenish, perhaps. Yeah, I think that works. All right, so we have all that in there, and that's great. And so you can see how we knocked out the light areas of this image and then we brought through some of the behind stuff. And what you can do is you can also use this with blending modes if you wanted to. So you could try that multiply that we were going to do before and you can see it just it doesn't doesn't work so great. It doesn't look as good cuz you don't have a lot of that pixel information in there. But a lot of times blending modes will work really nicely with this. So you do want to give that a try. And so we're going to keep that on normal and let's say, you know, you have that mossy bit in there from before. And let's say we want all these areas to be kind of mossy. So what I'm going to first do is just use burn 
and just kind of darken some of these areas up. Like I said, it's it's really intuitive. You can do everything on the fly, and it affects it. So I'm gonna I created this moss layer, just a repeating texture. All right, and so what I'm gonna do is I want it to affect those dark areas. So I want to knock out the light areas and of the underlying layer. All right. So I'm gonna drag that slider down and just move it along. And you see pretty quickly we have moss in just those areas. You know, and what you can do is slam a layer mask on that. You know, grab some sort of brush that you like and you can sit there and sort of, you know, maybe with a texture brush or something like that and knock out some of those areas, maybe make it a little bit more natural. But what's great about this too is let's say you had a brick wall and let's say you wanted the moss mostly to be in those grout areas. And so we're gonna knock out the darker areas, right? And if you look, now we have it so the moss is mostly inside that grout. And this is all super quick and super fast to do. And you could sit there and play with it and tweak it better and make it look nicer. But, you know, there's just so much you can do with it. And if, say, you wanted to lay some graffiti on there or whatnot, you could slam that on there. And this is a sort of instance a blending mode might help a little bit. But first of all, we're going to lower the saturation because it's a little high. And... Then we're going to go back into those sliders. And this layer, we probably don't want to mess with anything on this layer. That looks pretty good. But the underlying layer, let's knock out some of those lights. And so the grout shows through just a little bit. And then what we're going to do is knock out some of the darker areas. And so it looks like this thing has been on here for a while and has weathered a little bit. And so you can see how it kind of sets in there nice. And maybe it doesn't look totally natural yet. So what I would do is drop the opacity on that. I'm going to drop it to like 50. I'm going to duplicate that and then maybe set it to hard light. And then in this, you might want to adjust your saturation. But now you can see those bricks are showing through and you have a pretty good representation of what graffiti might look like on this wall. Another important thing you can do is layer it down. And so we'll go back to this grime and as you can see, you can move it around and such. But let's say you want your selection that you've made, the whites that you've knocked out, let's say you want that to be permanent, you can do that. So the easiest way to do it is you just create a new layer above or below your layer, select both of them, and then just right click and go to merge layers. And you'll see it actually changed a little bit. And what happened there is that it didn't carry over the uh, blend from underneath. And so that's the one thing that won't carry with it is the uh, underlying layer blend diff mode. So you'll have to redo that. But what it is is it's super convenient because if you're blending, I'll go undo, if you're blending with this stuff, and let's say you want to darken a bunch of things, you want to darken the whole thing a little bit. The problem is, as you start darkening stuff, it's going to start showing through the things that you had before, if you want to burn that. And so merging this down gives you the ability to merge and adjust things, you know, change the color, change the brightness, without having to worry about all that blending stuff happening. But like I said, you will have to redo any of those other settings because those ones don't carry over. And now what I'm going to do is rapid fire through a few more examples. Um, now that you guys have the basics, I will speed the video up a little bit and explain a little bit of what I'm doing. So here I'm just adding some like wear and tear and grunge to the side of this building just to make it look like it's been damaged or been here a long time, you know, post-apocalyptic stuff. And so you see me playing a lot with those sliders. And so I'm basically knocking the lights off of the current layer and then blocking the darks from the underlying layers so those windows don't have stuff over them any grit or anything like that. Super basic, super easy. And I figured here I would just lay in some of that moss again, knock out those windows with the darks for the underlying layer, and then just sit here and kind of dodge and burn some things into place. Not a super great result, only took about a minute and a half, two minutes, if that. And so just to give you an idea of the sort of things you can do. With this one, I just wanted to make the wall look like it was peeling with paint, some grime, and so same techniques, knock out the lights on that layer, the background looks okay, it's not super great, but you'll see in a second I actually do a uh, bevel emboss on it. And that what that does is, as opposed to the background looking so flat, it gives it just a little bit of a lip. You'll see there in terms of lighting to make it look a little bit more natural. This next bit, I'm just going to combine two skies. We'll make this uh, beach day a little bit cloudier. And uh, you'll see how quickly you can just move the sliders around and get a blend between the two. And it's not going to be absolutely perfect, and you're going to have to do some manual work probably, but you can see how quickly you can combine these two cloudy days and get them to look fairly natural together. You'll have to do some manual work and you'll see me knocking that out, but this literally took maybe a minute. 
you know what I mean? And so you see how quickly you can do that without having to worry about making all sorts of selections and stuff. Here I'm basically just going to add more surf to this photo. I took these photos in Australia and I figured they'd make a great example. And so I had this other photo from the same area and so I want this surf in the other photo and so I'm just going to cut that out knock out the darks and just sort of finesse it in there and you see it works pretty quick. These examples also only took a couple of minutes. It's super quick. And the blend if function works really great with things that are high contrast. So this water and the surf is super high contrast so it works really good. The previous examples were also decently high contrast. Um, in the next section I'm basically going to do an advanced tutorial that shows you how to use color information to sort of work these blend if modes as opposed to using just contrast, a little bit of a combination of the two, which is really nice. And I'll also have some other more advanced examples in there. So just click this box over here and you can check out the more advanced techniques that I'm going to show you. Thanks a lot for watching and I really hope you learned something.